Hello Pepperdine staff. In this video we'll continue with a Query Manager Fundamentals tutorial, specifically viewing, editing, and expanding on the use of an existing query. Let's locate and view an existing query and take a closer look at this simple example. I'll select Lens Simple Query Example. Notice that in the Owner column it is a private query, which means that only the user ID that created the query can open run, modify, or delete the query. Private queries, if any, display alphabetically at the top. Public queries display next alphabetically, meaning those who have security access to those queries will be able to run, modify, or delete those queries. Please note, with access to a public query, that you do have the ability to modify and save that public query. So, it is recommended before you make any edits to first save as private, thus making you the private owner of that copied query, consequently giving you the ability to craft that query to your specific needs without impacting the usage of that public query. Notice the select column. Here you use the checkbox with the action box to add to favorites, delete, rename, Additionally, you have the ability to share your private queries with other users by using the Copy to User action. And also note the description column may provide a short explanation of the query. We'll first begin by running the query to HTML and viewing the results. If I run it as HTML, the output is displayed to another browser tab. Notice the number of results and the number displayed. Select View All to see all 20,000 plus results. Let's go back to the Query Manager. Notice the other options such as Excel, XML, Schedule as an alternate means to view your results. Now, let's select Edit and open up this query to view some basics. Click on Edit and view the PS Query Builder which displays various tabs. Each tab represents a page where a specific task can be completed. Some of these pages will be used regularly in query design and others are more specialized and will be used rarely. Notice it defaults to viewing the queries fields page. Here we're viewing just one field in this query. So in the HTML result that was the output of the EMPL ID of everyone in the database. Notice the other pages are tabs. We'll look at a few of them in just a moment. First, let's look at some basics in this page. The column will identify the column position of that field starting from the left. Record.FieldName is the query manager's way of identifying a field in a record. The record name is personal underscore data. However, we cannot determine that from the Fields tab, but we'll see how to determine the record name in just a bit. Note that the Query Manager automatically assigns personal underscore data as an alias. The alias is simply the letter A assigned to the first record used. If we were to add a second record, its alias would be identified as B, and a third record would be assigned C, and so on. So what we're looking at here is the general information of the field EMPL ID located in the personal data record. We then can see from the format that the data type is a character string limited to 11 characters. The output will have a heading or text as EMPL ID. Located in the Add Criteria is a funnel icon allowing us to click on that link to edit criteria properties. The edit button allows us to edit field properties. And all the way over to the right the minus icon provides a way to delete that field. The query tab identifies the chosen records for this query. In our example we see only one record, the personal underscore data, and it is given an alias known as A, in other words the letter A. So we know that a record contains multiple fields. When we click on the folder icon we can expand the display to view all available fields in this record. Here we see that there are 144 fields. We are viewing the first 50 and thus we can click on the link to view more or scroll through a view of all available fields. 
or you can click on Find and enter a search string. Notice the AZ sort icon. Use this feature to sort the fields alphabetically. Click it again to toggle the view. We can see that the Emble ID is the only field selected, so now let's add the field first name. Click on the checkbox. And now we can click on the Run tab and view the results. By using this tab, we can preview the results of the query we're creating. And it is recommended as you're building a query to run it as often as you add functionality to confirm your expectation of the results. Now, when we view the Fields tab, we see the first name field assigned to the number 2 column with the character data type 30 characters in length and the heading text being first name for this field. Let's add another field, select the Query tab, and let's select the employee's city and rerun the query. Now, when we view the Fields tab, we'll see that the City field will occupy column 3. Note, by selecting the Reorder slash Sort button, we can change where those fields are displayed. Select Run and view the results. Now let's navigate back to the Query tab and save this expanded query, giving it a new name. So this is the fundamental way of creating a new query from an existing query. And now, before we conclude this tutorial, let's take a look at one more tab, the View SQL. This tab is a view only of the SQL code displaying the current state of the query as it is programmed. Since PeopleSoft Query is a tool that helps you create and run structured query language, we can look at these SQL statements as we build a query. This will give us a better understanding of what we are doing and how the query works. The SQL code we see here is resultant for what we created using the builder. It starts with the selecting of the record field names for the first name, the Ample ID, and the city from the PeopleSoft Personal Underscore Data record. So upon running the SQL, all 20,000 plus rows of data listing the employee's first name, their Ample ID, and city in that column order are displayed to the output. In the next tutorial, we'll build upon what we've learned here. That's it. Thank you for watching. Music